One of the things I love to test out when I am actually going to do interview setups is what gives me the softest light. Which diffuser gives me the most flattering light on my actual documentary subjects? So today I'm going to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is to test out different types of diffusion to see which one is the softest. So the tools we have today to work with, first is our camera, the DJI Ronin 4D 8K. And I wanted to use the 8K because I wanted to see at 8K resolution, which diffusion still creates the softest light. And then we also have the Cook SP3s in a few different focal lengths. We'll probably primarily be using the 50 millimeter, but those are beautiful cinema lenses, pretty sharp. I'm not going to shoot them wide open, probably at T4, T5.6, so that we can't blame any softness on the actual lens itself. And the different types of diffusion we have working today is the tried and trusty softbox over here. Test that against the smaller aperture light dome. We also have a scrim cloth over here. I have a 6x6 six six scrim, which I rarely use, except in outdoor interview setups. And then over here are some light bridge panels, which I've had for a long time, but again, have not used as much as I would like. And then we also have a aperture lantern. Now I would use a lantern when two people are talking at a table, but maybe it'll be pretty nice in an interview setup. So we'll test that out as well as putting grids on our light domes. And then one other thing we'll do with the light bridge is to actually create a book light where we bounce the light off of the panels and then come back through another diffusion, probably the scrim or a shower curtain to see if that creates the ultimate softness as many people People believe. So we're going to roll through all these different types of diffusion and see which one actually creates the softest image for your interview setups. Let's do it. I have traveled the world and set up hundreds, if not thousands of interviews. And now I have put everything I've learned about setting up and creating great looking interviews into a concise, to the point and affordable course, the 10 steps to cinematic interviews. The course just launched and it's only open until Cyber Monday on December 2nd. So make sure you visit the link below and use code earlybird25 for 25% off the initial launch price. We're gonna have two lights. I would have liked to use the same light on all of the different tests, but the light bridge do require something a little bit different. So our main light is this G-Yoon Mullis G300, so a 300 watt light, really portable, really bright. I would take this on pretty much every shoot, and so it's nice to test it against all the different types of diffusion. And then over here with the light bridge, we have the Aperture 60D. And the reason I'm using the 60D is because it has a beam angle that you can make tighter. So when you're using the light bridge and using something like the G300, the light would kind of spill everywhere because the beam angle is fairly wide. And so you want to have something that has a controllable beam angle. I think this goes down to 15, 20 degrees. And so you're just hitting the actual light bridge reflector and then it's reflecting the light back to the subject. So that particular test will be using a different light, but all the other tests will be using the G300. And then we're also going to close all of these big windows so that the less bright 60D isn't at too much of a disadvantage. So those are the tools we're gonna to use. And we're gonna start out with just the bare bulb G300 and then we'll roll through the different diffusions. So on the camera, we have the Cook SP3s. I'm gonna use the 50 millimeter because that's my favorite focal length for my A-cam. And I have it set at 5.6. If you open it up to like a T2.4, you'd have a softer image. So using a 5.6 will give us a better sense of which diffusion is actually the softest rather than if the lens or the camera is adding its own little softening characteristics. All right, first test is a completely bare bulb harsh light, hard light, and I don't often do this for interviews, but it's good for a control here. So whenever I set up these interviews, I'm going to go ahead and be looking at where a interviewer would be, as if I was the interviewee, and I'll just talk to them a little bit, and you can see as I move around how the diffusion and softness affects the actual light falling across my face. Well, I'm glad you asked that. The 10 Steps to Cinematic Interviews is a course that I made that really helps beginners and intermediates level up their interview technique and interview setups. Next up is soft boxes. I'm gonna throw a soft box on this G300 from Aperture. It's the soft box I use most often. I think it's the one that most people use in interview setups. So we're gonna throw that on and that'll be sort of our second control and see what it looks like. The Aperture Light Dome 2. And it is a pretty large softbox. There are some bigger ones, but there are definitely some smaller ones. I think this is a very nice middle of the road softbox. We have the standard cloth inside of the Aperture Light Dome. It's small enough that you can travel with it, but it's also great for in-studio setups.
All right, I'm gonna throw the grid on this one real quick just to see how much that softens the image as well. Maybe not at all. All right, look at that one. All right, so now we have the grid honeycomb on the Aperture Light Dome 2. And grids are not really meant to soften light. They instead focus light. And so there's a lot less spill coming out of this light dome than there was before, which for our purposes today isn't a huge deal. But I was curious to see if this had any effect on the actual softness of the light coming through the light dome and the diffusion. We'll just get you to talk. To All right. Yes, thank you, for the, thank you for the time. Next up, we have a small softbox, and I'm actually really interested in this one because I have not used it ever since I got the larger Light Dome 2. But on some travel jobs, the Light Dome 2 is just too big to fit in any of my suitcases if I'm doing like a travel documentary, brain and content piece. And so this might actually be a really good um, choice if it does happen to soften the image fairly close to how the Light Dome 2 does. But as we all know, the softness of light is often dictated by how large the light source is. So the larger the light source, the softer the light will be. So I would assume that this smaller softbox won't be as soft or as diffused as an image as the larger light dome too. But let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna set up the scrim next, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put the scrim in front of this small softbox and do a double diffusion just to see what that looks like because this is so small and easy to travel with that it might give you most of the diffusion you need, but you could always just like travel with a shower curtain or just a sheet to punch that light through to see if that gives you the diffusion you need if this isn't giving you enough. So we'll do that just as a test to see and then we'll go and do the scrim all on its own. So here we still have the small softbox on our Molus G300, but then I went ahead and put my 6x6 scrim in front of it. Now this really diffuses the light, so we might have to get a little extra exposure. It's still looking decent on here because it's so dark in here, but it really does soften the light. If you didn't want to travel with a larger softbox, or if you only had a small softbox and just didn't have the funds to spring for a larger softbox, then you could always get a scrim cloth or a shower curtain and some light portable stands to actually give yourself a little extra diffusion. It's a double diffusion and it does work really well. All right, so the 10 steps of cinematic interviews. All right, so now we have the six by six scrim from Manfrotto and we have just the G300's bare bulb shooting into the scrim. Now, this obviously creates a pretty large light source, so the light should be pretty soft. Cruising, cruising, cruising. All right, next up is the Aperture Lantern, which is by far the most fun to set up. So lanterns aren't often used as a interview source. Usually this would be for maybe two people talking at a table and then you can boom arm them over and then hang them from above, but we have it. So it's nice to test it out and we'll see. Probably has way too much light spill for me, but we'll see what it looks like. All right, so now we have the Aperture Lantern, and just from where I'm sitting right now and looking at the monitor, it is definitely a soft image. It feels like it's kind of lighting up everything around me, which might be a nice look, especially for more high-key interviews, but they're not really meant for this purpose specifically.
All right, next up is probably the most affordable and travel-friendly option, and one that I use quite a bit on branded content pieces where I need to travel abroad, and that is the five-in-one reflector. So obviously it has a gold, black, white side, but if you just take those off, it just becomes a see-through diffusion. And then over here, you can just get a cheap, lightweight, portable stand and a clamp to clamp it on, and it makes for a pretty great travel-friendly diffusion. Just take it out. It's already half berthed. Fun to take apart. Ooh, it's like a nice breeze. Nice, that looks great. All right, now we have the 5-in-1 reflector in front of the G300. And this is a very portable, very affordable option. And so if this looks as good as some of the more expensive soft boxes and light boxes, that could be a really good option for budget filmmakers. All right, we are done with the G300, so we're gonna turn that off and we're gonna to turn to the light bridge with the Aperture 60D. They're probably about the same. All right, so the light bridge is a little unusual, but what's nice about it is that you don't need any big soft boxes. It can fit into a lot of small areas, and so if you were backed up against the wall, you could pull this out and use it where you may not be able to get a big soft box or a scrim or a second light stand in that position. So that's one really nice thing about it. And then also a lot of people think the light bridges just create a softer looking image, and so we'll test it out and see if that's actually true. And as I mentioned before, one nice thing about using the Aperture 60D compared to a lot of the other bulbs on something like a G300 or a B500 or an Aperture 300 is that these are focusable. And so I can focus the beam down to just hit the reflector because otherwise you're losing a lot of the light spilling out to the sides. All right, so now we have the light bridge with the Aperture 60D bouncing light off of it and then coming back onto me. And the one problem with this setup is that the 60D is just not nearly bright enough compared to the G300. And so we'd had to take some NDs off of our ACAM, but the light coming and hitting me is seemingly very soft. As a interviewee, it feels very soft, which is something to think about, right? If you're interviewing someone who's not used to being on camera, then they might actually really like something that's softer on them. The harsher the light, the more you feel like you're in part of an interrogation, and maybe the more closed up you'll become. While the light bridge is up, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the much brighter G300 on it, just to see how much brighter we can make this shot, even though we will be losing a lot of our light due to the spill of those lights themselves. All right, so now we're throwing on the G300 just so I get a much brighter light in here. And if you're going to use a bare bulb with the light bridge or any type of reflector, you're probably gonna want a reflector because it'll just focus the light more on the actual reflector itself so that that light spill actually comes back and doesn't just shoot up into the ceiling to be lost forever. and striking. Much brighter. So now we have the G-Yoon G300 with a reflector on it shooting into the light bridge diffusion four and that's bouncing back and lighting me. And while the spread is still quite a bit wider than the actual reflector, so we're losing quite a bit of light up in the ceiling, it's still focused enough on the reflector that we're getting quite a bit of light back on me, much, much brighter than the Aperture 60D was, which is nice to see. So there are quite a few different diffusion methods to try to create the softest and most flattering light on your interview subject. So now I'm just gonna play all the ones we tested back to back to back as well as side by side so that you can judge for yourself what you think creates the best looking image and then the most diffused light. And then we're gonna come back here and try to use as many of these diffusions as possible to create the ultimate soft image.
So which diffusion did you think looked best? Let me know in the comments below. But before we go today, I'm going to try to create the softest light possible by using as many of these different types of diffusion as I can. So we get the trifecta of diffusion in front of our light now, which is a softbox going into a light bridge reflector, reflecting the light back through a five-in-one diffuser. And this is probably about as soft as light as you can create with three items. We could add a fourth, maybe a scrim, but then I think we'd probably lose too much light power. But the nice thing about this G300 is it does have a boost mode to get us from 300 watts to 500 watts. So I'll kick that on and see if that gives us enough power does change our color temperature on our light to a 4300 and the fan kicks on and we'll do one more test to interview her. Now how you diffuse your light does often result in the softness but there are some other things you can do which just soften up your image a little bit. The first is maybe don't use an 8K raw sensor because that's just gonna show a ton of detail and be a little harsher on skin, for example. The other is to open up your lens. I've been shooting most of this test at f5.6, but now we're at a T2.4, so already I'm sure that it's a little bit softer on my actual skin and face. The other is you could potentially add some haze to your shots. So if you have a small hazer or a fog machine, you could just put it in the background and it just makes everything feel a little softer and any light that is actually going through that fog will actually diffuse because of the water particles in the air. And then finally, one of the problem areas of having a light that's maybe a little too harsh is often in the part of the skin where you'll see the glare kind of bouncing back to camera. So often on the forehead or on the nose. And so just having a little bit of D-shine really, really helps in a lot of different interview situations. And as long as the person's comfortable with wearing a little bit of this, you will take some of that shine and some of that glare off of more harsh lights. So let's just uh, probably have a little perspiration on my forehead. So we'll just dab some of that on. It's hard to see, I'm getting in my hair. This channel is gonna turn into a makeup tutorial channel. So now if there was any glare on my forehead, it probably is controlled a little bit better. So just having something like a shine controller, D-shine on you at all times when you're setting up interviews, uh, I think the interviewee would appreciate it if they didn't have you know, glare coming off of their head. Let me know in the comments below if there are any diffusion techniques that you like that you didn't see tested here. And then if you want to learn more about setting up great looking interviews, check out my course, The 10 Steps to Cinematic Interviews in the link below, which is 25% off until the doors close on Cyber Monday. Often, filming great looking interviews is the job. It is the very backbone to almost every documentary being made today. And if it is a weak point of your work, you'll lose out on great paying work and unique life experiences. As an Oscar nominated and Emmy winning filmmaker, I have traveled the world and set up hundreds, if not thousands of interviews for films that have premiered at festivals like Sundance, Telluride, have been bought by Netflix, HBO, PBS, and Disney. And now I have put everything I've learned about setting up and creating great looking interviews into a concise, to the point, and affordable course, the 10 Steps to Cinematic Interviews. This course will not bog you down with endless hours of content, but rather just give you the techniques and knowledge you need to create great looking interviews, no matter the location or how much time you have to do it. The course just launched and it's only open until Cyber Monday on December 2nd. So make sure you visit the link below and use code EARLYBIRD25 for 25% off the initial launch price. I'm looking forward to helping you create great looking interviews. So let's get started.